previous 12D videos, we've had a look at various range files that 12D have available. So you can actually color up your 3D model and interrogate the data a bit more and then pass that information across to the client. So obviously a color drawing like you're seeing here with the PDF with the depths between the design and the survey can show to the client where the cut and fill areas are, but it does probably need some sort of a legend or a table on there to denote what the different colors are. So to give a bit more meaning to the data. So we're gonna go into how to create a table in 12D. So this is the panel that I use to find the volumes. And obviously I've produced the faces into a model there and I've got my volume report that's been produced and that's coloring it up nicely there. I wanted to then create some sort of a table to match that. So I'm gonna come under CAD, drafting, text and tables right down the bottom there and it's tabulate a range file. Or to get it to a little bit quicker, you might come up to the 12D search option here and type in range file or tabulation and that will also open up the panel. And this panel can be used for all the various range files that we have available. Obviously I'm looking at depth today, but you could pick any one of these here. We need to then load in the various range file that you've used. And you can see I've just used one of the standard ones out of the 12D library. So I'm going to use the same one here to get started. And then the units that it is. So obviously if it's slope, you'd be putting a percentage or a degrees. If it's height, you might put RL in there for the units. But obviously with the, with the depth, I'm just going to put in meters is my is my units between them. And then the location on the screen. Have a think about it here where you're actually going to print it out to. If you're just going to use the quick sheet plot method, then you probably want to put the table up in the coordinates of where the plot actually is. So we just click in a little corner angle there, pick a spot on the screen, up near your location, and it'll then lock in an easting and a northing up in the world coordinates location. But if you are actually putting it on a title block, like you can see here, then I'd be looking and thinking about the coordinates of where my title block is. And 12D does tell you the coordinates down the bottom left here, sorry, the bottom right corner here. As I move my cursor around, you can see those coordinates popping up. So I'll just take these ones out, quickly pick somewhere on screen, and that'll roughly get me started. I can then type in some sort of a general heading if I want to for my table. Now by hitting process, it will go through and will make the table correctly for me and it's actually placed it into a model called text. I already had it turned on to the view so it's come up and shown you straight away. That's not really that obvious but all those settings are actually set under the font button here. So the model that the data we got placed into, the color of the text and the border around our table there, the size of the font. Now the size of the table is actually governed by the size of the font or the text that you're producing. So if I put five meters, if I hit set, you will need to finish this panel before you can process it. But obviously making the text larger has now mean that I've got a bigger table to try and represent on my drawing. So just have a think about that. Also the color, I would probably stick to one of the pen colors. I'm gonna pick a pen two five. Uh, the pen ones will always plot out black when we print out directly to, from 12D using the, the standard PDF printing options. So that way I definitely know that it's going to print black text and I can then play around a little bit more with what sort of font that I might want. So a bit of an aerial font there. Set all those options, finish, and I can process again. Now you'll notice that it's keep producing more and more tables doesn't actually have any clean button on here. So it might be the case that you will come up under here under models clean pop this one up here, middle mouse button, select it off the view there and you've got it there. The word is text for the model there, clean that all out. And when you're happy with it, you can just process it one last time. Actually, I might move it over a little bit more. Never really quite happy with the, the positioning of these things. The other thing you'll notice that when I do process it, it does process the full range file. So I'm going to go in and actually open up the range file and you'll, you'll see all these colors that we've looked at before, but it's printing all these options. Now, Realistically, in my drawing of what I produced, it actually isn't needing all those colors. If I looked at my volume report, I'll just open that here. You can see a lot of these cut increments here, cut and fill. The cut increments have got zero, zero. They're all got no color produced until I get it to a depth of negative 1.5 meters. So really all these yellows never get shown in any of my plan. It doesn't really start until it gets to negative 1.5 or the middle of the orange one there. So I'm just gonna quickly edit the range file, it's pretty easy. We just come up to the top here and place a new name in. Hit the right button and that's then saved it from the 12D library into my project. And now I can actually go and edit this quite quickly. So I'm gonna take out all these ones out, delete all those, write that. And what do I need at the bottom of the file? 
go back to the report again and look down here you can see those last couple down here have zeros for the fill so basically if it gets any I mean, in fill of more than 2.3 meters which is all the way down here 2.3 then I'm never going to see these colors in cyan either so I'm just editing or, or deleting the standard range file from 12d making it related to my project writing it into the job so I've got a copy of it there and then I'd replace the range file here with the one that I'm going to use as my example so if I process that I'll only get the range file that I need I'll clean it out one last time to have a look at it process one last time and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that now, I don't really need that panel but I would actually like to if I need to produce this again I'm going to actually create a screen layout file again we've talked about these before screen layout files in another video but I could quickly dump that panel I've been here before so I'm going to replace that one and we're going to dump this one as well pick the range file again dump that one and append to the end and that will mean that if I need to come back here at all and produce the table again I can basically come under the file layouts and bring that screen layout file back up and we'll have the two panels there pick my example one and off I'd go and produce that same table again so that's how we can produce a table nice quick and easy and we'll get you some pretty good results and we can then place those on the drawings and as you can see I've been here before if I open up this one there's the one that I produced there before with the table on top now you might notice that it's got a white background I did spend a bit more time on here and actually put a wipe out on that background so let me just quick take you through those steps and I'll show you how that's possible as well so all these strings that are produced and this table itself is produced are actually not super strings so what I'm going to do is come up here under utilities first and convert the, all the data to a super string so I'm going to get the whole model just quickly nice and easily convert it all to super strings I can do a lot more with it then I'll just convert the whole thing that's done now under utilities because they are super strings I can actually put a fill in there so I'm going to come in here and just pick my outline border there that's that polygon that's produced as the extents of my table and I'm going to set in there a set a solid color and the color is actually going to be this view color and that will mean that it's going to use black if it's black as the, is the background or if it's on a piece of paper the background would then be white and I'm actually going to put it move that string to a new model so that when it comes up in my plot sheet 22 or whatever the sheet number you're going to have for your print that I'm going to move that string to this new model and this is going to be for my table actually I'll put that in there as well table there you go change that so that strings now gone turn that model on and you can see how it's sitting now on top of all the other strings and on on the table itself then I'd want to actually grab all the other data and just quickly change it because I've now placed that one string into the model I'm going to move all the other ones out of the text model out of that text one and I'm going to move them across and put them on top of my wipeout window so if I place that in there put that in there and just go change it's going to move the original data and that data is now going to sit on top of that wipeout window so when it comes up it will just wipe that out in the background um, that model that I've then produced can then either if you if you're using the old plotting method the plot frames you can load that into your plot frames under your titles here models to place and, and place in your drafting or if you're using the new multi-sheet plotter we can come down here and I've got a standard one here this one's probably a little bit easier to use because you set your drawing sheet up how you like your drawing sheet to, to be sitting and you can see it all there very graphically of what you're going to get um, you put your frame in so that'll give you your frame of what you want to produce on your drawing and you can control the offsets of where those sit and then essentially you can add up the model to that as well and if I just turn that on you can see that's where the, the table is going to come up next to to the frame as well so there's a couple of different ways and a bit of a trick of how to actually do the wipeout within 12d as well to give you great results with your tables and legends